Factor360 is a uh, US-based company and uh, it is a global brand. And they are a member of organizations dedicated to online learning and testing excellence, such as the National College Testing Association or NCTA and ATP member. Uh, ATP is a global voice for the testing and assessment industry. Their clientele includes the U.S. State Department, Business Continuity Institute from the U.K., Taft Law School in the U.S., and DART Singapore. DART Singapore is a leading cybersecurity training provider. And Avant, Avant Assessment, it, it is a global testing uh, company in the U.S., among others. So to tell us more about Proctor360, let me introduce to you our uh, our friend, our dear friend, uh, Paddy and uh, Cranty. Thank you so much for the kind introduction, Roland. Hello, everyone. It's good to meet you all. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet today. I know we had a little bit of an issue with the Google over to Zoom, but I appreciate you guys coming on board here to do this orientation with us. So our goal today is to one, go over the student process of how you'd be taking a assessment through Proctor 360. It should be a very straightforward and simple process for you guys. I'd like to demonstrate that today. And then additionally, I wanna clarify any questions that you may have about proctoring, remote proctoring, its need, its use, what we're doing um, to overall work for you as a student and make your educational process easier and better. All right. So with that, Roland, can I go ahead and just uh, get started with the demo? I will take silence as a yes. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, the first thing that I want to do right now is just go over the uh, proctoring process for a student and what exactly we're going to be going ahead and doing. So as a student, what um, you're going to be doing to take a proctored exam is you're going to be accessing your course and you're going to be accessing assignments. So here in your assignments, I'm sure you guys have a much longer list of assignments than I do here, but I wanted to uh, focus this around just the uh, quiz or an exam that you'll be taking. So typically you're going to see two things. One is going to be the quiz directly and the other is going to be uh, the same name as your quiz and in parentheses you're going to see proctored exam or you might see something else that um, directs you to say click here. Now if you access the quiz directly you will be prevented from moving forward uh, by a password field. What uh, we want you to do is to access the quiz directly from here. And what we're going to ask you to do is to actually click on this. And what this is, is it's a, it's Proctor 360's LTI tool. And uh, it basically allows us to work inside the Neo LMS that you guys are using. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. You may have to click play to see it. It's gonna ask you to select an available date and time. Now on this schedule here, you can see that I have a limited available date and time. You, on the other hand, will have multiple dates and times available to you. You have a 24-7, 365 schedule. The only thing you'll have you'll be limited by is the date that uh, this exam is available. And uh, it uh, depending on how that's set up by your instructor, it may be limited to a single day. It may be limited to a week, depending on how your instructor sets it up. For me, you can see that I have all of November to take this. 
but I'm just going to select the next available slot. You will be able to select the same day and you will be able to select the slot within the next 15 minutes if you want to take your exam within the next 15 minutes. I'm just required to schedule in the future because of my schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and click schedule. And then it's going to ask me to proceed to my system check. And here, what we're going to do is we're just going to verify that our computer and everything is working properly. So we're going to verify a few different things. The first is we need to make sure we have the right type of system available. So Proctor 360, we support Windows, Mac, and Chromebook computers, and we support the Edge and Chrome browsers, right? And then down here, if you want to look at the minimum requirements, you can certainly go ahead and do that. And then we're going to agree to the privacy policy and start the system inspection. First, we're verifying that we have the extension installed. If I have the extension installed on my system here. If you don't, you can simply click this link. It'll take you to the Chrome store. You can add it to Chrome or Edge, and then just refresh the page and be able to go through this step. Here, we're verifying that the microphone is working. Here, we're verifying that the speakers are working. So right now, there's music that's playing within my ears. Here, we're verifying bandwidth. If you ever have issues with anything, you can always go to the left-hand troubleshooting window and just go ahead and click that. And that will take you to the particular step and the resolution for that. So you will see that the recommended is 10 megabits per second, but we do support a minimum of one megabits per second upload and download. Additionally, if you want to see general tips or you want to contact our support directly, you'll be able to do that from here as well. We do have 24-7, 365 support. Hello, everyone. And here I'm verifying my webcam. Here I'm verifying screen share. And then at this point, I'm done with my system check and I'm able to proceed to my check-in. And I can just go ahead and click that. You will also receive emails about this as well. So you will receive these same links and access via email. So you should have two different sources to be able to go ahead and access your exam. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just modifying the date and time on my side so we can get into this exam right now. And you can see here at the date and time, I'm able to go ahead and start checking in to my exam. So I'm gonna just start checking in here. Again, I'm verifying that my extension has been installed. I'm going to share my screen. We do require that you only use one monitor while testing. The only reason I have two monitors here is because we're doing a demo for you guys and I need dual monitors to be able to manage the presentation on another screen. Again, we're setting up the camera and here we're asking for a face photo. So we're just going to go ahead and take a face photo, make sure it's clear. My face is fully visible. Submit that. Here we're asking for an ID photo. Here I'm just going to take a picture of my ID, make sure it's up close and fits in the box and everything's visible. And go ahead and submit that. You will see that the AI ID verification is going to be working for you. So what that's going to do is it's just comparing the face photo you took with the face photo on the ID. It's comparing the name on your ID with the name on file. So if for whatever reason this step fails, it will not prevent you from moving forward. You can still move forward and take your exam. The only thing it's going to do is it's going to throw up a quick flag for your instructor to say, hey, can you review this ID? 
because uh, we weren't able to detect whether it was valid or not. We always provide the benefit of the doubt to the student. So our philosophy is just to, if there are any flags to flag in the background and let you guys test as cleanly as possible, we don't affect your score or anything like that. It's only after your instructor reviews and uh, they'll be able to then see, okay, was this valid or not valid? Here is the environment check. So this is a step that can be turned off or on and your instructor may choose to turn this off or on, but it's asking for a sweep of the testing environment. So we just ask that the student shows a 360 view of their testing environment and then they show their table to make sure that it's clear. Submit that. And then you should be able to start your session. It'll link you to your exam. The passcode will automatically paste in. You can go ahead and click access and begin taking your exam. So here, you're just going to answer the questions that you have. I have very basic questions here. And then I can go ahead and finish my assessment. And once I'm done with this, I have the option of just closing out of the window or coming back here and clicking close session. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So it's a very simple and clean process for the students, we want to make sure that they have a really nice and clean way of accessing and taking their exam. So if you guys have any questions, I definitely recommend posting them in the chat. And we can certainly discuss any questions, concerns that you guys might have. Okay, thank you, Kranti. Uh, my dear students, do you have any questions that you would like to ask? Or maybe you can write it in the chat and we can read it for you. Okay, here's one question. Yep, I see that there... Allison had I see that yes. Allison had asked a question. If it happens that my camera is bro broken, can I still proceed without uh, with taking the quiz or will that prohibit me? to take the quiz. So you will you will be required to have a working camera that's um, functioning yeah. uh, for us to be able to recognize it on Proctor 360's side. So you that is a requirement to be able to use our system. Is there a minimum requirement for webcam quality? Some are the only using laptop webcam web camera and those are not usually high quality. It may not be able to detect the ID scanning. We do have minimum requirements for the mobile uh, for the webcam. They are very minimal. I can go ahead and give you our system requirements, so you'll be able to see it there. But the minimum requirements are 640 by 640 resolution. So they are fairly minimal. So I don't think you'll have too big of an issue being able to use that. Okay. 
Is it available on mobile devices? Unfortunately, no. We only support desktop computers and laptop computers. The reason behind that is we're asking for two things, the webcam and screen share. Many of the mobile devices, iPhones, as well as um, Androids, they have limitations on being able to capture the screen of the iPhone. So we've limited, limited it to just webcam and screen, um, sorry, just laptops and desktop devices. What are the parameters that can be considered cheating? So um, just to let you know, we don't like to use the word cheating. Um, we, we like to consider them violations, potential violations in the testing environment. Uh, the main things that we're looking for is whether a student is present or not present while they're testing. If there are multiple people, a cell phone or tablet is being used and whether it's the same test taker who checked in that's also taking the exam. So those are the parameters we're looking for. What if my Wi-Fi got disconnected while taking the exam? So um, Wi-Fi issues are obviously going to be problems, you know, when taking an internet exam like this and using a proctoring system. What uh, we do in the background is we automatically attempt to reconnect without um, you having to worry about that. So you should be able to proceed um, even if you do experience a Wi-Fi blip where you know it drops for a second, it comes back up. Required megapixels of webcam. I think um, whatever his base should be fun. I don't have an exact megapixels number. If the camera is fixed in the keyboard, as in some Huawei laptops, how can we show our desk before the test? In those situations, um, we would recommend to just attempt to do your best to show the environment as much as possible if you're requested to do that. So that option um, is kind of free where you have to run that step by yourself, but uh, we definitely recommend to get as close as possible. Can the ID scanner also scan portrait IDs? I'm not exactly sure what a portrait ID is. If you can clarify that, maybe I can answer that question a little bit better. Is the audio going to be monitored during the exam? Uh, depending on if that setting is turned on or, on, on or off, it can certainly be monitored. Mainly what we're looking for during the audio monitoring is if there are multiple speakers during the testing, uh, during the testing uh, that's occurring. Would like to clarify that the DLS UID is enough. As long as the ID has your full name, as well as a photo picture of you, it should work. What's the exam about? Um, de depending on the exact um, topic that uh, or the course that's being delivered, the exam content I'm sure can vary. Do we have to verify every time before taking the exam? Yes, we do. <laughs> we do have to verify every time. Jake, will the university be able to provide equipment for students who unfortunately were not able to meet the system requirements to take the examination? I'm certainly I'm sure you can certainly talk to the university and see what options are available to you. Does Proctor 360 also check running applications in the background? No, we do not go on the system level. Primarily we're checking on the browsers level to be able to see if um, any other programs or anything are being accessed, any other uh, pages, stuff like that. Um, but we are not going on to, uh, there's nothing locally being downloaded to go into that level.
does it re is, is it really necessary to show the 360 view of our study area before we can take the exam? I'm sure that's something that um, you can speak to with your instructor about specifically what they want you to do, but we do recommend um, showing the 360 environment as well as the table because we just want to verify that everything's been take being taken in a proper environment. You know, we really want to make sure that the exam is delivered fairly for everyone. Is moving our eyes elsewhere considered a violation already? Uh, no, I don't believe so. That should not be the case. Does my face always need to be visible on screen? I'm concerned because I need to solve equation on scratch paper. I'll have to look down, uh, which may cause my face to be out of view for a few seconds or even minutes. So um, even if you, even if there is a flag that's you know, um, flag during the testing process, please remember that um, it's only throwing up a flag for review. It's not going to affect your score. It's going to be available for your instructors to be able to be to be able to review and then make their own determination. If audio is monitored, what is the grounds of a system of the system? to consider an anomaly in the exam. Some students do not have the privilege of a quiet environment in their respective homes. Again, we're just throwing up a flag and making it available for review. Your individual instructors are able to review and then make their own determination. Yep, same question it looks like. What if my audio or camera got dis disconnected while doing the exam? Will my exam be paused or stopped? So if you do experience a audio or camera disconnect, we definitely recommend reconnecting it and then refreshing the Proctor 360 page to check back into the exam. Uh, because once that's gone, we go ahead and lose it. And it makes it difficult for um, anyone to evaluate the session afterwards. Having gotten my official DLSUD ID card is core enough to verify before taking the exam. So we're really just looking for any form of ID that has a face photo. And we're also, we also want to verify that um, the name on the ID is valid. So as long as it has a face photo and it matches your name, you should run into no issues. May I ask if Proctor 360 can detect multiple windows open? Yes, it can detect multiple open windows. Is Proctor 360 too sensitive to any kinds of sounds? We are primarily only flagging voices, um, things like breathing, keyboard taps, something so light and mundane will not be flagged. With both camera and microphone being recorded, what are the implications of having a violation due to home environment addresses, as it is inevitable to have an absolute quiet and no person environment during an exam? So again, these are just flags that we're throwing up. Um, it's going to be available for review. Those flags are available for review for the instructors, but after that, um, it, uh, you know, they can make their own determination. meaning to say our camera is turned on the whole duration of the exam. Yes, your camera is required to be turned on the whole duration of the exam. Is it also required for the mouth to be kept shut during the exam? So um, you can certainly speak um, depending on what your individual instructor allows. You know, I know that um, some students uh, find it very necessary to be able to say their questions out loud during the testing process. So as long as the instructor has no problem with it, I'm sure that shouldn't be an issue.
the assessments. Um, there are times when we need to compute and would have to bend down to our notes with the assessment terminated on our faces if our faces weren't detected. No, the assessment will not terminate. Um, we do not force the exam to end at any process. Um, again, we give the benefit of the doubt to students. We want to make sure that they're able to take their full exam. And what we're doing is just making it available for review afterwards. Coughing will not be flagged during the exam. Uh, there are no max number of violations that will lead to an exam being canceled from the technology perspective. So our biggest goal with this entire process, and I think Roland can agree, is uh, what we want to provide is um, easier access to be able to take exams, more access for more students to be able to take exams regardless of the environment they're in where they can conveniently take an exam at any time at um, any place that they want to be able to take it. So we certainly don't want to limit you guys and your capability to. And ultimately what we're trying to do is provide that capability where uh, exams can be administered anywhere, anytime, and really uh, provide that fairness across the board. Are we going to need specific computer peripherals when using the extension like headphones with external microscopes, uh, microphones, for example, or would wireless headphones would be enough? So uh, there's no requirement on our side for um, you to use specific headphones or anything like that. Um, you can certainly use wireless headphones if that's what, uh, what you want, or you can just use the standard speakers from your computer. Since you've stated you are all trying to work on all any valid IDs that have a face on, does it passport and national ID can be considered for it to verify? Yes. Okay. Might it detect music playing? Yes, it can detect music playing. Is it all right if music, oh, uh, if music was playing, that's up to the instructor. Yes, so Proctor 360 is basically just for verification and monitoring of exams. Nonetheless, instructions and the time duration of the exams are still dependent on the subject professor. Yes, that is the case. Does it monitor all the tabs open in my, in my Microsoft Edge? Really, we're only detecting them if you switch to those tabs. So you can have hundreds of tabs open, but we're really only flagging them if you're switching back and forth between those tabs. Will the instructor be able to cancel out the flags that were incorrect or excused? As per the instruction, yes, they will. They will have the ability to excuse it. Is Proctor 360 available for tablets and iPads? Uh, no. Uh, again, we only support uh, Windows um, 
we we only support desktop and laptops, Windows, Mac, Chromebook computers. What will happen to the video clips sent to the professors after the verification? Will they be saved or deleted afterwards? They are deleted completely after a six month period. So after that, they will be completely removed. Uh, we don't hold on to any PII. Is wearing headphones prohibited? That's up to your instructor. Will the student know if they are flagged? Proctor 360 works in the background. So no, we don't want to notify you of any flags, mainly because we don't want to disturb the testing process. We just want you to go through it and um, uh, go through it as normal. So you shouldn't have to worry about that at all. If an examinee uses dual monitor setup and since Proctor 360 only shares one screen, will the activities on the second unshared monitor still be detected? So we definitely recommend only using one monitor because that's uh, the screen that we capture. That's the entire screen that we capture. Uh, we do have the ability to block multiple monitors. So if your instructor turns that on, they'll be able to block multiple monitors from being accessed. So you may have to unplug one. There are concerns regarding privacy. So just to clarify for those who want to ask the same question, the purpose of sharing IDs is just to verify that we are the ones taking the exams and will not be used for other purposes. Absolutely. So just to let you know, obviously we have to have a huge number of securities around our system and uh, limitations on who can access it and uh, where from and when they can access it. So those are all placed in on the server level, on the system level, the um, the actual personal identifiable personal identifiable information that we have from you is only available to D DLSUD staff, and in many cases, is only available to your instructor that uh, gives that particular exam. And it will all be deleted uh, from our system after a six month period. Can notifications be flagged? Uh, depending on the type of notification, yes. Okay. Does Proctor 360 apply to enabling assessments as well? Uh, you definitely have to check with your instructor. If I'm correct, Proctor 360 will only flag students who have a possibility of cheating the exams and will not terminate the exam, but is upon the review of the professor. Given the perceived sensitivity of the system, wouldn't it be counterproductive to the instructor to check the students' flags recording one by one? So um, um, it's not nearly as sensitive as you would um, think or imagine. I know that um, through our conversation, it seems like it's uh, very sensitive, but it's really not. Um, you know, what we're looking for is really clear um, violations that we see. So you actually don't end up with nearly as many flags as you would expect to see. The majority of test takers that use our AI system, you know, they're able to get through fine without uh, flag. So it's really not going to flag the majority of the students. Does Proctor 360 run when we are going on, only run when we are going to take the exam? Um, yes, it will only runs while the exam is taking place and you have the student link open. How do we know it will not act as spyware? 
Um, you know, obviously we have to go through um, the Google Chrome store to get it approved. So they do verifications beyond our own internal verifications to make sure that it runs properly and it's doing its intended activity. Can we remove the extension after we take the exam? Absolutely. Using Proctor 360, can we continue the exam if we get disconnected? Yes. Would like to clarify something from the start of the meeting. Are we required to schedule the date and time on when we are going to take our exams? Yes, you will be required to schedule. Um, you have the availability. You know, we uh, we have 24-7, 365 scheduling available for DLSUD. So you could schedule your exam in the next 15 minutes if that time slot was available and it was made available. Some examinations require using other applications, MS Word or Excel, while taking the examination. Is this also flagged or detected with Proctor 360, or would um, using other applications not be detected? Uh, depending on the settings, so depending on the settings, your instructor would probably not turn on detection of switching windows or something like that when uh, they have exams that require uh, MS Word or Excel. So. Um, in those uh, situations, they wouldn't be flagged. Does it support Linux OS? So we do support, we do support um, Ubuntu. Yeah, so if a user does have Ubuntu, we do have that uh, capability. Is there a function where we can inactivate Proctor 360 when there is no exam? Yes, you should be able to turn off the extension when you don't have an exam running. So during the entire length of the examination, where at least when you're accessing Proctor 360, you will be required to have the extension on, um, even if there is internet uh, connection. Uh, maybe I'm not understanding that question properly, but um, you should have the Proctor 360 extension enabled uh, whenever you have um, the Proctor 360 tab and the exam running. Does it support Opera? No, we do not support Opera. So even if um, you schedule and you're unavailable to take the exam on that date, what you'll be able to do is you'll have a period of time, a 24 hour period of time, or really until the exam itself closes to still be able to access and take your exam. So even if you scheduled for today, you for whatever reason, you were unable to take it and you need to come in tomorrow or the day after, as long as the exam is open, you'll still be able to come in and access it. If we get disconnected and want to reconnect again, do we have to go through the verification process again? No, you won't have to go through the entire verification process again. The only thing you'll be required to do is to reshare your screen and then reshare your webcam. Is it only for exams only purpose? Yes, it's only for exams purposes.
are bathroom breaks allowed during exams? Are bathroom breaks allowed during exams? Um, depending on uh, what your instructor allows, you can certainly ask them and see. Um, we will flag it in our system because you will be leaving the test environment, but your instructor may allow that, so it might be all right. Does it have key logger? Uh, no, we don't uh, log keystrokes. We do block certain um, short keys. Does Proctor 360 support the Safari browser? No, we only support Chrome and Edge browsers. Okay. I think with that, uh, we covered about every question. <clears throat> well, yeah. eating during uh, would... <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Roland. Yeah, I would like to add about the incident reports, because I see that the students are worried that uh, the flag incidents would give an impression that uh, they're doing something else. Um, the the system will give uh, incident reports after the exam, and then uh, the professor will review the incident reports, and uh, they will discuss it, discuss it with you. Like uh, maybe, for example, uh, an incident report would show that you left uh, the monitor or the the exam area. Then maybe the prof will ask you why. Why were you absent during this certain period? Uh, where did you go, etc.? So the uh, the one who will determine if there was any violation would be the professor. And so the the system will just uh, flag incidents, and it is still up to the professor to to decide uh, on on an incident. Yes, exactly. So um, we just want to, you know, provide help where we can during the proctoring process. We don't affect any grades or anything like that. So we're in those respects, we're very hands off. Again, we're very much on the student side. We want to give them the benefit of the doubt. So the only thing we're doing is just working in the background to flag. We're not affecting anything on their computers. We're not affecting um, any of their scores, anything like that. Yes, <clears throat> sorry. Okay, question about laptops and desktops. Um, yeah, we're, we're looking into that. We're, we're thinking of um, reserving a computer lab or uh, a space in the library during during exams. So we'll see, you will see about that. Yeah, well, we will be coming up with, uh, with the guidelines and uh, also uh, we will share with you the tutorial video. We'll have uh, this meeting is recorded and we'll share it with you so that you can go over it again. And uh, we will also provide mock exams, so pilot test mock exams for for everyone for you to get used to to the system before we will uh, actually use it for a major exam. So some uh, professors may may use it for for quizzes, but we're looking into major exams like uh, the midterm or or final exams. But right now, there is no, uh, no, no, 
no policy yet that you will be strictly using it. So for now, it's the learning learning period. We will learn about the system. We'll try it out, and then uh, we will see if uh, there anything that uh, that needs our attention. So I think we're just about uh, nearing the time that we had gone ahead and reserved for this. Um, if there are any questions that you guys have throughout the testing process or um, have, um, have any questions related to computers and support level computers, uh, support for those computers, we definitely recommend reaching out to our support team. We have 24-7, 365 support. So if they if you have any questions there, they'll certainly be able to assist you. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that link in the chat. You can certainly open up a support ticket where they'll be able to assist you before your exam, uh, after your exam, if you have any questions. OK, yes, they, they asked for the, the support link. And uh, when will Proctor360 be implemented? Uh, right now, this uh, first semester, we're still trying it out. So we are asking uh, our, our faculty to try it out with their classes. Maybe uh, don't use it first uh, with the enabling assessments or, or exams. So try uh, mock exams just to get the feel of the system. So there will be a soft implementation for the final exams, um, but it will not be for all faculty members. It, it will be for those who would like to try it. Okay, so that we, we will have a soft implementation, but definitely next uh, semester, we will have a full implementation. When I say full implementation, it, uh, it doesn't require everyone to use it. Uh, when they say full implementation, the system is there and it is, uh, there for everyone to use if if they want to use it for their online exams. So if the professor uh, thinks that uh, think that the exam can uh, best be given on site, then it will be done on site. Is the password unique for each session? Uh, the the access code is unique for each assessment. Okay, okay so it's three fifty, and uh, I I think we need to to end uh, this session. Thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you for raising all your concerns. And we appreciate uh, all the responses given by Kranti. Kranti, thank you very much. And uh, if yeah, you have further yeah, it was questions. Great. Thank you. Sorry, it was yeah. great. It was great. <laughs> Your students definitely ask tough questions. We're very excited to start uh, the semester with DLSUD. So I appreciate you guys giving us the time to come and speak. You especially, Roland, thank you for um, thank you for setting this up and then giving us the time. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, yeah my, side as well, on my side as well, I'm thanking everyone who took our time today. Mm -hmm. My name is Patty. We didn't get much chance to speak to each other, but I have been the active POC. Uh, you can call me the students and the teacher's friend. So I'll be playing the role of active POC. What I'm going to do next, Roland, I'm going to prepare an email. Uh, that email will be having today's meeting recording so that the recording can be distributed with the student leaders, um, DLSUD team members, yes. and all other students as well. Uh, apart from that, I'll be also mentioning the support portal link and my email ID will be definitely there in case any students or the student leaders or the DLSUD team members want to keep me in the loop regarding any of their queries or if they won't need you know, any sort of assistance from my side, I'll be more than happy to help team DLSUD members and students on the first note on top priority. So this is Patty, uh, the student friend and the team admins friend, and I'll be more than happy to onboard 
all of you for the next examination set. And I'm really excited to do this with all of you together. Granted, this one is for you. Uh, Roland just wanted to know that, is there any chance we can have the name of the participants from today's meeting? Uh, the reason why he's asking yes. is to give a kind of credential or certificates to the participants for attending the today's seminar. All right. Uh, I don't know. Uh, in the in the meeting, can we have can we get that list of attendees? No. I think Zoom might be able to do it. I'll have to check. Okay. All right then. So. Well, everything is looking good on our side. And uh, again, I'm really excited to host everyone, Team Delis UD, and all the students and the student leaders for this examination set. I'm looking forward to grow together. Thank you, everyone, for taking out time. I'm really excited. Prant is excited. I'm excited. And Team Proctor 360 is excited to serve you at the best. Thank you, Roland, for conducting this session. This is really Thank great you. and much needed. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. In, uh... Yeah, uh, excuse, excuse me, Paddy, just uh, just a few minutes, few seconds, actually. I uh -huh. just post, posted a, a photo for the evaluation of the, the session. So, dear students, uh, kindly uh, scan the QR code and uh, answer the evaluation for this afternoon session. Yeah, much there needed. We also need to know your feedbacks. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. We will we'll share it with you. Yeah, yeah. All right then. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.